excited, guys. Yes. Yes. I, th- I believe we're getting the good thumbs up. We are live. What's going on, y'all? I am excited to be here. Panelists, y'all ready? Thumbs up? Yes. I am making room for comments because we have had a couple of people in the room hanging out, just waiting for us. I'm going to go ahead and bring down the music. So we can get into some business. We're here to talk about influencer marketing, the power of the creator economy. Uh, This will be exactly one hour long. We are already three minutes into that one hour. I promise your time is valuable. We have been thinking hard at work. We have been hard at work thinking. We haven't just been thinking about being hard at work (laughs) and making sure we have ways to convert. And, And I was able to coax and convince some of the best voices on specifically LinkedIn. I'm really excited to have this conversation on LinkedIn and for you all to meet our panel. And I think I might go from the, t- we'll do a little clockwise action here. Nisog, Judy, Corey, and then Lola doing a quick little introduction. But Nisog, if you'd like, can you um, introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about, about yourself and what brings you to this conversation? Hey, thanks. Thanks a lot for having me, Hermini. Uh, hey, everyone. I am Nisar Shah. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Affable AI. Um, Affable is an influencer management platform. And myself, I come from a software engineering world, so I'm excited about the aspect of bringing data into the influencer marketing industry, helping streamline processes, automate as much as possible, and help measure the impact that influencer marketing is driving. I'm super excited to be here with uh, panelists who are industry experts in their own right, who've been uh, in the influencer industry, who are influencers themselves, and learn from their perspective while sharing a bit of mine uh, when it comes to technology and data in the space. Yes, well, thank you for being here. Thank you for building one of the structures that we're going to get to certainly talk about on um, Affable AI and really understand when, when you say an, an all in one solution. I'm, I'm prone to say for who, and I, I think I already know the answer because it's, it's, it's two-sided, and I love where you're going with this music. I can't wait to come back to you. Uh, Judy Fox, how are you? Tell us a little bit about you and what brings you to this influencer marketing conversation. Hello. Yes, I am Judy Fox. I go by the hashtag Fox Rocks on LinkedIn, and I am a LinkedIn business accelerator. I've been in business development and sales for over 18 years. I started my own chemical engineering and sustainability company by using LinkedIn. So I'm very familiar with how businesses and how even just the individuals working for the companies need to show up, which is why I am loving the creator economy. I think it puts the power back in all of our individual hands to direct our careers and direct our futures. So I'm excited to be here. Yes, I agree. It's in fact, as someone who's been creating content for 25 years, I've never I've never felt more heard or to be honest, you use the word powerful. It is powerful when you create content that you can own. And, and then and then you start to collaborate is exponential. Corey, you have quite possibly my dream job. It's just like the words in your just <laughs> the description of what you do. Give I wish there was like a I come from a reality unscripted TV. I wish someone was consciously making sure the entire uh, unscripted reality TV genre was going in a certain direction. Tell me, tell us what you do a little bit over at Edelman and why you think, why I'm so gaga over your title. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I'm fortunately at a place in my career where I can kind of make up my title based on what I do. <laughs> um, I've been doing, I've been doing this for a really long time. Um, so I've been doing public relations and influencer marketing and integrated communications for 25 years. Um, and for me, the reality is that influencer marketing and creator communications has dominated the earned communication space and is now stretching into the paid communicators communication space um, and is a mature comms channel. So for me, innovation is at the core of how we drive clients forward and how we can be really smart marketers. Um, and I geek out on on this space, on influencer marketing. My family and uh, my husband, my son and I, we have a TikTok channel called um, oh. at Rainbow Dads. Um, uh, Rainbow Dads with, um, on TikTok, we've got, you know, a few, we got a few followers. So it's nice. And we get to stand up and stand out um, for our community as as queer parents. Um, but it, it impacts the work that I do because I have an understanding of both sides both the talent side as well as the um, the client side when it comes to creator marketing. 
So it really kind of gives me a good perspective to help our clients do some of the best work they can. Um, and, and conversion is a big part of that. Well, I am excited to get to, I'm excited to hear about the journey, uh, but I, you know, I'm tasked with making sure we land on conversion. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the, to the journey and the way we get there. Lola. Hello. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm so excited to be here with everyone. Um, and happy to introduce myself a bit. So as, as you all know, my name is Lola. I am an advisor to marketing leaders and CMOs um, and a lifelong marketer, also fellow marketing geek, as Corey mentioned, um, who is really passionate about our opportunities right now to use marketing as a tool to make the world a better place. And I think the greater economy is one of the places where this is happening so profoundly in a way that, as Corey also kind of mentioned, takes us back to the basics, back to the principles, we are systematizing and scaling word of mouth. So people can authentically um, create connections with consumers in ways that are real, coming from the actual users and admirers of products and services. So that's the way I really see the opportunity we have in front of us. And I think right now we're seeing the industry grapple with the sort of um, imperative that, um, you know, all of these efforts come from a place of authenticity and reality versus sort of the maybe mid 2010s approach to influencer marketing, which is more about, you know, anybody hold up this thing if you have a lot of followers and say how great it is. <laughs> um, so I'm excited about this tipping point And I think there's a lot for us to dig into. Yeah. It's, as you're saying that, I'm thinking of that scene in the Truman Show where, when, when Ed, it's almost like we were, we were warned before reality TV and, and the, the, the thought of, of, of using ads and, and penetrating through the ad to the real people, to the real people connected to the products. Um, I want to loop back to that question first, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, we are streaming through Restream, through StreamYard, which means that uh, captions are available. So if anyone who's watching this on LinkedIn who wants captions, you can go ahead and enable captions. I think we have an, an awesome global audience, which I see here. Lots of familiar faces. Uh, Nisak, I want to go to you and just simply, if you can, explain what does influencer marketing mean? Well, I mean, this is going to sound uh, very basic for a lot of people who are listening and on the panel. But uh, I think it's important to bring everyone on the same page um, influencer marketing is a, is a fancy kind of term, but basically what it means, and Lola addressed to it, um, saying word of mouth marketing. Um, in today's day and age, influencer marketing is a way through which brands are reaching their consumers through trusted creators. Um, trusted is important and creators is important here. Like these are the two terms that we want to focus on. Um, these creators are people who create content irrespective of the medium. These might be bloggers. Uh, these might be social media creators. These are folks on uh, TikTok, like Corey, uh, folks on LinkedIn, uh, like Lola, um, who are constantly creating content that is resonating with their target uh, audience and trusted because they have created an audience which actually does buy into what these creators are talking about. So when a brand now wants to spread word about their product or drive conversions on a new line of products, they can approach these trusted creators to amplify the message and amplify the reach of their message uh, to the end user. And that's what influencer marketing is in today's day and age. Wow. By the way, thank, thank you for that walkthrough and perfect timing as we have uh, one of my favorite Instagram influencers and an and influencer who's relatively new to, to LinkedIn. And I'm excited to figure out, to hear why and share why. I think I have a good understanding of why, but I'd like to introduce y'all to Natasha Graziano and let Natasha introduce herself a bit and just share, share what she's been up to um, and excited for y'all to get to meet her a bit. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm in New York. Uh, first time in like 10 years. Absolutely loving it. We went and saw my billboard in uh, Times Square yesterday. It was very special with my book on there, Marketing, another technique towards it. That was super fun. I was on the Tamron Hall show yesterday morning talking about the book. Mm -hmm. We did a big giveaway to everybody. So that was really fun. Another thing, marketing. How do you get onto these shows? That's the kind of thing I help people do. I help people to get onto these shows, to get onto bigger podcasts, to get a bigger name on social media, to get their brand out there in the world, to get into the press, 
to grow themselves by first growing their mindset, getting their message right, and then show them how to do it online. And you see, that's what it's all about, right? I believe in helping other people to do it. It's okay, I've done it, yeah, and I still do it. I do it on a phenomenal level, but I wanna show other people how they can do it, you know? Oh my gosh, you certainly do. I love the energy, um, almost the speed in which you just shared that. And I have to be honest, uh, in the two or so years that we've met through social audio and, and the ways we've got collab we've, we've collaborated, y'all, the, the power of, of influence, the power of collaboration with influencers is, is, is almost unexplainable. Um, and when Natasha says that two people have the ability to come together and create something amazing um, is, an, is an understatement because I'm just constantly in awe of what, of what you create. Um, and, and we, the people, I think that's what's fun about what's in social media now is like we're, we're starting to have, be, A, we're having fun. I think we're at the point in content where we're, we're past the perfect avocado shot and the marble table and we're finally conceding mm -hmm. to the, real, the realizing the fact that we have to have fun because if the content's not fun it's not fun to look at it's not fun to share lola beyond the selection process we now i understand a little bit about about influencer and the brand side beyond the selection process what are a few things that brands out of the gate can be doing to ensure that their influencer marketing and their strategies are effectively inclusive it's a really big question, Vinny, you know, and I think I'm sure all of us here have a lot of opinions. Um, I think it goes back to really focusing on what communities you as a brand have sort of accountability to solve problems for. So we see a lot of examples of brands creating sort of creator initiatives, um, sort of uh, groups of creators who are maybe representing a particular niche or particular particular ethnic group or a particular lifestyle or whatever it is, and they're putting those people in front of the camera. They're making sure that those people have an opportunity to reach larger audiences. And at the same, at the same time, those people are becoming advocates for the brand. So it's in really authentically trying to think about how you as a brand can make a difference for a particular audience that's relevant to your brand's identity, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I want to go to Natasha and say, um, then, then what responsibility falls on the influencer or what can influencers do to ensure a successful influencer marketing experience? Cause so to ensure that you have a good experience yeah, are successful on one. the side of the brand or of on the your side, on the, on the yeah. influencer side, what are things that we can be doing to ensure that? Authenticity, oh, yeah. authenticity. Do you love the product you are promoting? Do you genuinely believe in it? Like when I'm asked to promote certain things, I, I just can't do it because it doesn't go in alignment with my brand. So do you truly believe in it? Do you truly love it? Because that authenticity comes across on the camera. You know, you want to show something you're passionate about. And then the way that you create it, how are you making that product different to somebody else who's doing a campaign on it? So if I was going to take something that was super dull that I had to promote, I would really want to make it as fun as possible. You know, even when I'm promoting something like solar panels, which, you know, I have a lot of clients who work in solar panels. And then they ask me on the back end of it, hey, can you, you know roofing, solar panels, that kind of industry, pest control, that kind of crazy stuff. Like, can you show, you showed us how to blow up online, but could you show us now how you can promote this product so we can learn? I'm like, sure. So now I explain how, you know, I'll promote them in a certain way. I'm like showing my luxury home and I'm walking around and I'm like, do you know how this is run with solar panels? I couldn't think of a better way than to conserve energy. Want to try it too? Hit the link. You know, you just play with it. You just have fun with it. You be authentic and you use something that you truly believe in. Yeah, I, I'll throw this to Lola, Corey, if you, Natasha, feel free to, and feel free to have cross conversations as well. Um, we're, we're, we're sitting here nodding our heads in, in full agreement. Do you want to add anything first off to what Natasha said either? Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing I would add is I think the, excitement and the energy and the fun of it all is one aspect, but I'm also excited about seeing a lot of um, creators focus on the transformation that a product might create for them, even if that's not necessarily something that's super upbeat and fun. You know what I mean? I think that right now people are focused on truth and reality. Um, so whatever the, the sort of real story is, is compelling enough, even if it's not like sort of the TikTok dance approach, you know? 
Yeah, yeah I'm hearing uh, I, out of the box, okay. out of your comfort zone, out of the box tends to be a sweet spot for where we're at now is what you're seeing here, Lola, huh? Absolutely. And it's and it comes from truth, just like Natasha said, that's really how she feels about solar panels and how they impact her life. Like that's the reality. For someone yeah. else, it might be something different, but as long as it's coming from that place of truth, it resonates. I, I think too, you can also you can build that authenticity, especially if the product or service that you that that a brand wants to get to a creator is um, is one that is going to make their life better. To your point, Lola, about transformation, that transformation can be very functional. Yeah. It might be, and, and Natasha, you might not have known you needed solar panels or would have enjoyed solar panels on your home necessarily until you were first exposed to the technology. So one of the things that I think is is oppor- is an opportunity for a lot of creators, and and I I. I see this a lot in some of the the creators we work with, and sometimes when uh, my husband comes back and he gets a, he gets an opportunity, I'm like, well, don't discount it first. Why don't you ask them for a sample and then see if you like it? Um, because oftentimes you might come around, and then it becomes you know an authentic opportunity. Um, but you never want to fit a round peg into a square hole. By the way, I just want to say as well, there is another side of this whole thing. There are people who, like, I was, bear in mind, guys, you know, four years ago, I was on the street. I had no money. I had nothing. I went into, I was literally homeless as a single mom. I had to go into charity shops, take pictures, and then not buy the clothes, even from a charity. Like, I would wear them, take pictures, and tag the brands, and just pray that somebody would want to endorse me, and eventually it happened. And that's what got, got me off the street. And the reason I talk about this in such a passionate way is because there are people out there who, yeah, you might be listening now, and you need the money. You need to pay your bills. So, honey, if you have to pay your bills, you have to get through whatever you have to get through. And that's you being authentic to you. So that's still okay. You know, so if there's someone who's like, I don't want to promote this clothing brand. You know, I want to promote books and all these wonderful educational things, that's okay. You're going to go through a transition, you know, and, and you're going to go through a journey and, and you're just going to say at some point, like I, I now talk about, I used to be a fashion influencer. I'm not now because I've evolved my journey, but I love fashion influence. I think they're incredible. I love what they do, but it's not my personal calling. Right. But I was once that, and it wasn't something I wanted to do, but it got me away from what I didn't want to be. And do you still shop? Do you still shop those fashion influencers? Do you still find yourself scrolling? Oh God, yeah. Like I, I guess do. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like it's it's so. My husband's like, you have just yeah. saved the same picture twenty times in different outfits. I'm like, I know the same pen. And you know they they'll still send me stuff now, just as gifts. But it's it's less. Uh, yeah, it's more as a celebrity endorsement. It's like, here, Natasha, please, will you wear our stuff? Versus me saying, hey, let's do a deal, you know, and, and come to an influencer marketing. Whereas they know, like, if Kim Kardashian does a post for you, um, you know, you, you're going to get excessive, incredible downloads and clicks just because she just put it up. And she was probably sent 20 of that thing before she got, you know, that one post. Um, you know, I've sent a lot of stuff all the time. And the ones that I, that I love, I'll, I'll sometimes tag on my story. And then, you know, I hope that they get also a really large amount of clicks. And um, yeah. No, I love and hearing that story. Put- Quickly to, to add to that, because it, it, it dovetails into the question you asked me first, Vinny. Um, Natasha, when you mentioned books, a really interesting approach that I was just reading about this morning, Penguin Random House is tapping into the hashtag book talks community, specifically focusing on black creators who are talking about books that they love. And that's really happening. But what, what's the brand doing? They're, they're listening, they're understanding what the authentic conversations are, and then they're tapping in and fueling and amplifying the creators that they really want to improve the lives of, as Natasha so beautifully mm-hmm. shared with us with her personal story, um, through their influence and through, you know, quite frankly, the money that they have to bring to the table for marketing. So it's it's this it's this wonderful win 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 where you know you can really make the lives of people in that community better, but also tap into the authentic um, relationship that that community has with your buyers. Yes, we. By the way, we are getting awesome awesome uh, responses right now. I have to give a shout out to LinkedIn. We're uh, so true, Lola. I just want to make sure I, I, I show this loud and clear. So true. Um, also, I'm getting lots of, yes, Natasha, and got to respect that hustle. Very inspirational. So th- thank you for sharing that with us. I, I think the cool thing, first off, that, that I'm gleaning from the, the influencer journey 
similar to, I'm sure on the brand side, and I want to get to this next, is that whether you are an established influencer or an emerging influencer, there's, there seems to be some type of role, some type of way into this influencer economy and this, the creator economy's influencer marketing scale. It seems like this is uh, an open market for all. I'm curious what type, for anyone who wants to answer this, what type of businesses tend to do well using influencer marketing? I, I mean, I have the philosophy that all businesses can use influencer marketing. Oh, yeah. I mean, the universe of, of media has expanded dramatically. When I started my career, um, we were pitching press, talking to reporters, trying to get them to write a story about our clients. That was earned media. That world has completely transformed. We're now in this space where anyone can be. We talked about word of mouth earlier. It's now really, truly digital word of mouth. We trust our friends and family. Um, Edelman has new, recent data that we released from a, our, our brand trust study. We do it every year. But ultimately, um, over over 76% of people uh, have made a purchase decision or advocated for a brand based on um, based on uh, seeing it from an influencer mm -hmm. or, or hearing from an influencer's recommendation. The power of those relationships we have with creators, with people we follow, whether they have 8,000 followers, 2,500 followers, or... 5 million followers, those relationships are real. Those emotional connections are real. We're invested in each other. And that reality is the, that communication, that exchange is really what all brands can benefit from. And not just cons uh, B2C brands, but B2B brands as well, business to business, um, getting buyers and more. 100% agree. Uh, I think this is an, a really important thing for B2B brand leaders who are listening to think about. It's really, especially if you have a product that is a high ticket, you know, talk about software as a service or something like that. You don't really need influencers with a ton of followers to make those 10 or 15 sales that are critical to, yeah. you know, sales leader getting their quarterly number. It, it just needs to be the right people. So then that really opens up the universe of potential influencers to folks who are actually on the front lines using your product and might have a social presence. Oh, yeah. I was gonna just to add to that. that. Oh, sorry, Judy, uh, you go ahead. I was going to put on my LinkedIn hat <laughs> <Good> <laughs> and marketing. say that when I think of the power of why I am all in on influencer marketing on LinkedIn is because of the power of Tipping Point. If you've ever read that book by Malcolm Gladwell, we have connectors on that platform, we have mavens on that platform, and we have persuaders. And people really lean into those different categories of influence that can make any brand tip. So yes, I love what Corey just shared about everyone can benefit from influencer marketing, and especially on LinkedIn. That was my plug for LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think just to add a couple of thoughts here, uh, while everyone can benefit from influencer marketing, um, and I think just the spirit of the uh, you know question that you posted, Vinny, was like, you know, for whom does it actually work in terms of, let's say, conversions, uh, which goes back to the theme of discussion today. Uh, we have seen that a lot of the early stage brand, um, when they have to choose between marketing channels, they are benefit a lot more influencer marketing than other channels. So the comparative advantage that early smaller brands, e-commerce brands, uh, B2C brands, when they're launching the product, the advantage that influencer marketing has over other channel is much more compared to for a bigger brand, let's say Nike, when they work with influencers and they have their other channels, this, the relative impact is um, much more for like an early stage brand launching a supplement, launching a kids friendly cream uh, online and working with the right influencers and the impact that that gets for them. Yes. Um, There's amazing percentages as well. I'm just uh, seeing on the influencer marketing hub. This will fascinate anyone who wants some numbers on this. So it's actually said to reach 16.4 billion in 2022 this year, by the end of this year. So that's pretty impressive because it's grown from uh 9.7 billion in 2020 so it's just soaring right now the influencer industry and the 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing but nothing but. Ooh, hold on. I might think my volume might be a little loud here. Sorry, sorry. About that. You can hear an echo. No, you're good. A small echo. Are we all echoing? Are we all echoing? We're all echoing. We're okay. all echoing. All right, but now better. Test. Okay, better. that was good. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, much better. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So so we we're at the halfway point. We're like literally almost at 12:30. I want to make sure we have some room for answers. So if anyone who's listening to this, anyone watching, hey, I'm sorry that we didn't do this on on social audio, which is always fun on LinkedIn where we get to be a, much more interactive, but we can read the comments. So please feel free to ask questions in the comments. And while we are live, we will address them as we are going. And I'll leave a little bit of time at the end of this process to make sure we get to those questions now. Cool. I'm getting a thought. I'm seeing a thumbs up from the comments that the audio uh, seems to be fixed. I want to I want to talk about conversion. Let's get let's get yeah. one tactic, one way of, of converting Judy. Let's go to Judy. Uh, Judy, I, I want to come to Judy as a sales strategist, right? I, I think we're hearing from marketing experts and, and influencing, influencing experts. Um, as a sales strategist, uh, maybe even specifically on LinkedIn, I, I feel like so much of the influencer marketing conversation is based on, is predicated on the, the performance of Instagram and Facebook and, and YouTube and maybe even TikTok. Why is it important for brands maybe even and or influencers to be on LinkedIn? What could they do to stand out? And I'll just leave it at that part of the question first. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to start by just giving everyone a practical way to bring a lot of the influential marketing language that people use on Instagram or on Facebook or any other channel. The platform of LinkedIn loves the word we. We are together. We are peers. It could be a peer-to-peer -peer sales relationship or a peer-to-peer -peer influential relationship. I'm not looking at somebody as being maybe always ahead of me. That language on LinkedIn will actually convert a lot better versus talking like, you need to know about this. You need this product. You need this in your life delete the word you and replace it with like, we will all benefit from this. We will all, let's all discuss and treat the conversation as peer to peer because the platform is extremely smart, <laughs> extremely capable of doing their own research, their own shopping around. And when you build trust, so that was the other thing you mentioned was we all talk about that no like and trust funnel but when you truly lean on the trust part on LinkedIn, to me, if that is the one thing you did with your audience, your energy, everything you put out there is treat everyone just as smart as you because that will keep generating that trust and that circulation and those shout outs and the people saying when somebody shouts out your company, all the activities you can do to leverage that to make more business and the brand deals happen. So. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yes, and, and then some. Anyone, anyone have a response or a thought that they want to add? To that? I, I think Judy's absolutely right, and and I, I'll add to that. Another thing that's really special about LinkedIn is we all know as marketers we want to be thinking about the context of moments. And when people are on LinkedIn, they have their professional hats on. They might be actually seeking solutions. They might be actually searching for solutions. And so if you can be there at that moment of consideration um, and become the brand that's being considered, it's to me a lot more impactful than necessarily getting awareness in a context like Instagram or TikTok where people might remember you, but they're not really in that mindset of I'm here to make a purchase decision. That is very different when we think about consumer brands, of course, but when it comes to B2B, um, it's something to consider about where you spend your time. I you know, when 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 we talked about the topic, this topic, I get excited about the idea of conversion because having come from a early in my career an earned media background where I was constantly pitching press and pitching media, the CMOs that we would work with would be asking, you know, well, aside from the impressions that you would get, what 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 do we actually get out of this? How does it drive sales? And yeah, there's marketing mix modeling and there's ways to do that. But the thing about influencer marketing that's amazing is that it does connect the tissues between the channels and is the thing that we can use to, to grab uh, a consumer, a customer, a, a target, whether it's B2B or B2C by the hand and escort them through a journey um, and take them from awareness into consideration, into conversion. 
And the features and the formats we deploy through creators all um, help escort people along that journey. So whether it's um, discovery content that's designed to explain and educate or content that's designed to trigger FOMO to make people um, want to look more, want to purchase, want to buy, or whether it's live commerce buttons or, or sorry, live commerce that drives sales or buttons that drive commerce on, on particular channels, there are ways now that we can ground programming in conversion. And even from a B2B perspective, ground programming and acquisition that becomes such a powerful way to carry us through from one end of the funnel into the other. It's, it's a powerful, powerful um, um, channel and tactic for, for, for money to, to flow into from a marketing perspective. Um, just to add a couple of thoughts here, right? Um, influencer marketing, and when we talk about conversion, the definition of conversion uh, depends a lot on the objective of the campaigns. Uh, but specifically for LinkedIn and on that topic, I think, and there's a question there, which is, you know, sharing promo codes, uh, attribution, et cetera. The purpose of doing influencer marketing through LinkedIn uh, typically is much more for brand awareness rather than driving sales. Uh, because as Lola also mentioned, when people put on their professional hat on, they're trying to learn, they're trying to get uh, an idea of what is out there and they want to consume as much information on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn becomes a very good channel for businesses, especially B2B businesses, to spread word, to create authority uh, and become opinion leaders. So, you know, there's a synonym for influencer, which is a key opinion leader. And I think LinkedIn and Twitter and some of these channels offer a very good medium uh, for a brand to establish opinion uh, leadership much more than just driving sales and conversion and attribution through influencers. So, I just, um, yes. So, just for, for, for clarity, uh, Renee asks, do you think it's a good idea to share posts and various promos, coupons uh, on LinkedIn like we do on IGFB? We're getting a thumbs up across the board. We, do we get six thumbs up on this one? Or some... I would say no. Yeah. Yes. Thumbs yeah. down. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear the pros I'll, and cons of it. You want, I'll, to... I'll be really quick. Promotional Devil's advocate, sure. language comes from a place of talking at us again. I want to join in your promotion. So maybe that's um, inviting me to join something about the promotion. Maybe there's an energy around the community aspect that you're going to join or something to gather together. But if we're just being promoted at, we scroll right past it on LinkedIn. That's my energy. That's the energy I've had with every client. We shift yeah. from promo to creating some type of result, solution oriented on the back end of what is being promoted. I do think though, when you look at the, the notion of sharing others posts, that gives you a mechanism to show that you're participating in the community and extending the conversation from someone's audiences to your audiences, right? One of the things that I, that I like to talk about with respect to measurement in general is that shares of content, regardless of platform, are a great indicator of organic, um, performance of content, right? Engagement percentage, all that stuff. Yeah, great. Um, but, you know, I really look at shares as, as, a, as the true value of how people are advocating for you, extending your conversation. Um, and that's where, especially if they build on it, on LinkedIn, especially if they share and then create their own post above it, it's such a powerful way to show that you're part of a conversation and extending that conversation. Oh, that can I change my thumbs up to shares? Thumbs down for promo. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the way I, I was doing yeah. it. Too. Yeah. What kind of unites the two perspectives you both shared is the why behind it, right? So when you think about the content that is both shared on LinkedIn, it often comes from a place of teaching. So to Judy's point, it's not just about here's what this thing is and here's why you should buy it. It's sort of here's a new thought that I may have learned from this thing. Here's a new insight that might inspire you to consider this thing. And that's another level of authenticity that really resonates on you know, this professional platform. That is a brilliant, by the way, we, that's a brilliant point. And as you're saying this, we got a, a question that I thought was so timely and I wanna 
address it. Let's bring it in here too. Uh, the question is, uh, how are we going to take advantage of influencer marketing during a recession where time is valuable, <laughs> money is valuable? <laughs> yeah, sure. This is my favorite question. So this is my favorite question, right? So, um, you know, it's not just being in a recession and, and in the marketplace that we're in right now, but changes to privacy laws, um, um, uh, ATT, app transparency for iOS, right? Uh, ad blockers, they're changing media consumption behaviors. So in addition to the recession, what we're seeing is a massive shift in advertising budgets um, from, um, from targeted digital media into influencers as media. And this is important because what we're also seeing at the same time are brands um, looking at big C creative or big creative agencies and being like, well, OK, I'm spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on an idea when I could be briefing influencers for a fraction of that cost to deliver scale creative that I'm going to use in the ad formats in the same way that I might use a creative campaign. Now, that doesn't change the fact that there's value in creative ideas. Or, or creative direction, but ultimately when it comes down to it, on the content side of it, in a recession, in an economy that is that is um, potentially creating tighter, tighter um, markets, influencers actually have a bigger role to play, an outsized role to play. More important than that even, um, we're looking at a marketing channel that again, drives conversion. So it's measurable in a different way. It's not so much focused on just um, you know, throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what sticks. It's it's evolved to the point now that we can actually look and see how it's returning in, on our investment. Sorry. I mean, I think it's interesting that Vinny brought up reality television in the beginning because that <laughs> is exactly what you describe, right, Corey? Like the shift into having real people be the stars and we can debate whether that's going to be good for us as a world. <laughs> um, you know, we can debate that, but but it's cheaper. Quite frankly, right, and and um, and potentially, if done right, yeah. maybe more compelling. Yeah, yeah, we're getting this question a lot as well from our brand users, uh, and there, we've done an analysis. And there are two main reasons why influencer marketing is working during a recession. Uh, the first one is covered; it's cost effective. Um, you know, when you work with influencers, uh, you were able to not only create uh, a main content at a fraction of the cost of a content, let's say, production house, um, but also the volume and the reach that you get through that is immeasurable. Secondly, though, uh, I think which is more prominent is during the session, the consumers are moving towards a trusted voice and influencers are the trusted voice. So if an influencer, an authentic influencer, uh, as Natasha mentioned earlier, uh, will only promote or will only partner with brands that even during a recession should be a brand that should be promoted to the end users because an influencer knows the pulse of the followers. An influencer knows that the followers right now are being cost conscious or are okay to splurge depending on the season, depending on the time. So a conscious influencer will be able to Whoa. spread the message to the followers in the most effective way. And the trust uh, that is built uh, comes in very handy during these tough times. Yes, you could. Yes. By the way, I'm, and also just a shout out to all the four-legged influencers in our lives also, right? Because if it weren't for them, <laughs> fur babies or not. <laughs> Instagram. My four-legged influencer is outside yeah, right yeah. now. Speaking but... of the fox, by the way. What, Judy, well, I was just like going to gonna mention, yeah. Natasha mentioned mindset earlier. And so when I think of this question, I think of Natasha because of how she shared about her mindset going through the toughest season in her life. And I'm also a single mom and I've faced, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I had an immediate reaction and a, a kind of a, all of a sudden corporate accounts froze up and said, hey, we're going to pause some of our third party contracts. And some of my business was based in that space. So you reach these moments in life where it all came down to my mindset for how I was going to handle that. So kicking it back to you or to Natasha about yeah, that. Yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Oh, my Natasha. God. I, I fully relate to you, Judy. And you know what? You it's all about how you handle it. And I always say to people, it's about having a toolbox that you can use to navigate through life, through any trials and tribulations, through any situation. That toolbox is everything. How you react instead of reacting is you pause in the moment and you think, how can I 
benefit from this situation? Or what am I going to learn from this? So if you're not actually going to take something away financially from it, you've lost out. That's okay. But what am I meant to learn from this? Our mindset is something that will keep us through anything. I work with billionaires. I work with multimillionaires. I work with high level entrepreneurs and everybody in between. And there is something that holds the people who keep their money for many, many, many years at the top and the people who keep losing it at a different place. And that is because they, these guys here who retain their money and don't have massive fluctuations and tend to stay in a great steady space, whether that's in the millions or the hundreds of millions, et cetera, is because of their mind. How are you thinking? Are you feeling good? Mental health's a big part of it. Are you taking care of you? Are you looking after yourself? Do you feel like you are worthy of that abundance in your life? How are you looking after the behind the scenes? Because you can show up every single day at your best, but if you burn out, you're no use to anyone. So you have to show up, but not show down. You get it? All of that mindset. I am picking up. I am picking up what you're putting down for sure. We're getting awesome questions, by the way. Every time someone speaks, a new a new question, a new point of view comes in. Uh, I'm excited. I, I, there's so many different ways to go with what's next. I feel like there are so many different inputs and outputs when it comes to influencer marketing. So Nisar, when you when you say affable.ai is an all in one solution. <laughs> Is it really all? <laughs> all is quite a lot. Tell, tell us, tell us about the power of like what what you tr what you've built and why it's different than what's out there, and and how does that help brands and influencers be more successful in this journey? Right. No, um, it is all, but uh, at the same time, given how much the personal relationship between a brand and an influencer matters, is the part you cannot automate. You cannot bring uh, data to automate relationships. So that's the part we leave out of the brands. But taking a step back, um, back in 2017, when we first looked at influencer marketing and we're talking to brands, we realized that one thing that was lacking in the industry compared to all the other marketing channels was data and insights. Um, brands were working with influencers that were recommended by their friends or friends of friends. They had no clue if the influencer has the right demographic of audiences. They had no clue if the followers were actually real or they were bot accounts. Um, they, were, they had literally no clue in terms of the conversion, the sales, the impact, reach, impressions that they were getting on their influencer collaborations. So we set out to build that engine through which a brand can find the relevant influencers, reach out to them, manage all the conversations and measure the true impact that these influencers are driving for the brand. And in this case, we have been able to automate, let's say, around 80% of the process. But the remaining 20%, which is actually very critical, is the relationship between the brand and the influencer, uh, brand and the creator across any channel. Um, we've seen good success. We work with more than 100 different brands, uh, helping them automate and streamline their influencer marketing process. But one thing that we see that could really change the game in the whole influencer marketing world is to set this on autopilot so that brands can continuously run ongoing influencer collaborations without the need to put in the effort to actually work with every single influencer every time. Um, our differentiation and the reason we stand out is the focus on data, uh, the focus on this being a tech-enabled solution, um, rather than someone having to spend hours and hours into a spreadsheet uh, to manage influencer collaborations. Yeah. Hey, look, I, I trust autopilot as long as that pilot knows where it's going, as long as it knows where it's going. Right. We got a great question here. Uh, how can we bring relevance with regards to audience targeting? Is, is this what you're talking about? The level of transparency and authenticity to the influencers reach as well. For example, uh, Fazal Sadiqi says, if my brand is for Canadians and I want engagement from within and he is outside, is that something that Apple does? Uh, that's right. Um, a lot of times, and this is a great question because Fazal knows um, the the missing link here. A lot of times brands work with influencers um, who are famous, who are well-known, but may not have the right audience. For example, if you're a beauty and cosmetics company who is launching a new line of, um, let's say, lashes, you want to potentially work with female influencers in the U.S. who have a lot of their followers who are also women. Um Assuming this is the use case, you want to find influencers who have that target audience 
before you work with them. And going back to Fazal's question, you can actually identify influencers who have most of their followers in Canada, if that is your target audience, and then reach out to those influencers. When you work with the right influencers, the conversion you get from these influencers is up to 60 to 70% more than when you work with influencers who do not have the right demographic that the brand wants to target. Uh, I'm curious, you, you talk about data, right? It's all about data. I'm seeing in here automation plus data equals, I can't do that lip spacking sound, pop. Uh, data is everything. But here's a great question. How do you gather all that data that's available on your platform? How do you trust it? How do you gather it? Where do you get it from? This, there's a lot of- Walk us through um, it. Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. There's a lot of um, algorithms, machine learning uh, that we've built to infer uh, information. So for example, if you're a public creator on social media channels, uh, let's say your image is public, your biography is public, your recent pictures or videos are public. We use analysis on top of this. So we would analyze images. And if you have, let's say, a coffee mug in every picture of yours, we know that you have some affinity towards food and beverages. Uh, if you are constantly posting about fashion, we know you have affinity towards fashion. And a lot of this is driven by an analyzing these images, analyzing keywords. If you're constantly using hashtag uh, regarding automobiles, then we know that you're someone who's talking about automobiles or cars or motorcycles. So we would recommend influencers based on their content, analyzing images, analyzing text. Uh, we work in partnership with social channels. For example, YouTube, Twitter, they have APIs uh, through which you can gather some of the public information and then you are free to build some inferences on top of it. Uh, and a lot of the machine learning models we've built have 90, 95% accuracy, uh, which is good enough for the influencer marketing use case. Another thing I, I wanted to add after having the opportunity to sort of pilot your, your platform, Nisarj, is that I think it's really powerful to be able to look at the nuts and bolts of people's results across different demographics so that we start to counter some of the bias that can affect selection of influencers and also how those deals are priced. So I love the idea that, you know, a creator who might come from a historically excluded background who has a super high engagement rate and may have gotten paid less just because of right. their background prior, you're able to show their results up front versus maybe someone yeah. who comes from um, less of a historically excluded background so they can get that money. Yeah. <laughs> and the power of data is that it removes bias. Lola, we spoke about this, right? Um, when marketeers are choosing influencers, there's a, there could be bias in terms of their own network, the influencers they deem fit. Uh, but when you back it up with data, and if you have a, a preference regarding, let's say, engagement rate, then none of these biases would play because data doesn't have bias. It will literally show you who's the top performing influencer uh, who has the right uh, hold to your target audience uh, without any bias. Well, at least it removes some of the bias. Most it of it removes some of the bias. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. But yeah, I agree. I think it's really impressive that you built something like that. I mean, it's it's data. You know, data provides us almost with accuracy when you're looking in the past. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but it often predicts the future. Here's here's a great question. Speaking of the future of of in, this influencer economy, what kind of shift? Uh, you know, this question that comes in is what kind of shift in communities do you predict influencers can bring by coming together with brands? I, I'd like to sort of, if it's okay with the LinkedIn user who asked this, I'd like to tweak that question to what kind of shift in communities can influencers bring together with brands? I mean, I, I just, I'll say one word to kick it off, resources. Communities need resources in order to scale their influence. And so you know, it's, it's, it's a tale as old as time that it's okay to think about what sponsors can bolster your impact. And I think that's what we're seeing with a lot of the brand partnerships with communities. Also, I love that question, resources. Even this question right here. Sorry to be a question. Sorry to step on you. Sorry to be a question, Hogger writer. Renee says, any insight on the best way to get influencers on board to help your brand? Does this answer that you just gave Lola go for this, this question as well? Resources? Uh, you know, I hadn't thought about it because I did see that question. It's an interesting one. But yes, I mean, thinking about how you as a brand or a marketer could really align yourself with their desired impact, that community's influence that they want to have on the world and say, here's how we can help you get there. You know, I think that the, the 
previous question was pretty interesting in the sense that um, it, 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 it speaks to the notion of communities. And when we look at what brands are trying to accomplish with the use of influencers is to activate conversation and create communities. This idea of communities of influence becomes really powerful. Um, and, it, and a community of influence doesn't just include the followers of particular influencers' channels. It includes customers. It includes people that are ex brand fans. It includes people that are excited about something. And one some interesting things, I remember three or four years ago, it was like one in three kids wanted to be a YouTuber, right? It was becoming the thing for kids. Um, I've seen some recent data um, published around Gen Z that they want to have influence more than be influencers. And that's important because influencers that are out there have the ability to be heroes for those communities that, that follow them, that they have relationships with, to create a community of influence that is about carrying a message, that's about um, achieving um, um, equity in a different way or, or looking at sustainability, grouped together by shared passions, um, influencer marketing gives people a voice. Absolutely does. Here, here's another quote just to support what both of you are saying. Transparency of influencer pay equity. It's a big brand issue. Uh, you know, it's a brand issue now because unfortunately the brands aren't seeing it as a global issue or an industry-wide issue. So yes, it, it's, the, it's on the brand's shoulders for sure, but it is a, a global um, hurdle, an obstacle. And it's, it's to be honest, it's for the brands to overcome. And it's, I think it's for the influencers to help them get there to support each other up, to lift each other up, as we say, right? To to be at in a place where everyone's sort of at their best. Uh, Sylvia here says, at our company, we say that your brand's best influences are sitting at the desks, the desks next, next to you. They are your employees. Actually, Unless they're their four paw employees, <laughs> your dog sitting <laughs> next to you. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say so, about... The transparency of money. I just watched a video talking about a woman saying, hey, they wanted to give me and gift me products, but over a certain amount, I have to pay taxes on that. I have to. And what's interesting is there's so much transparency with how much they have raised in capital, this brand, how much um, venture capital money they've raised. And their campaign is only to gift about $100 in exchange for some pretty influential type of content. And she was like, well, here's your video. I, you wanted me to make a video for you for free for me to pay taxes on your product. I'm making the video now and I'm putting you on blast that you just closed $10 million of venture capital money, but you don't want to pay your influencers. And that's going to make a different ripple effect than that brand ever wanted to happen in their world. So, well, and, and I think that Felicia is bringing up, you know, the point of payment or no payment, Judy, as you're talking about, but also, well, who are you paying what and why? And with platforms like Nassarge's, if we're able to see that the why has nothing to do with results, then we're going to see more of those call outs and we welcome them. I want to see more creators on the other side who are getting paid the most, who are having a lot of success, start to share their numbers so that we can start to hold, you know, brands and decision makers accountable to making sure there's equity across um, lines of impact as far as how people are being compensated. And of course, they should be compensated. That has to be the starting point. Well, we owe that to our clients, right? So one of the things that I think is critical is, is transparency, not only to the creators that we're partnering with to make sure that we're being equitable and making sure that we're bringing opportunity to people who might otherwise not have that opportunity, um, elevating the voices that need to be elevated because that's where relevance lives today in our world. And um, if, we're, if we're not being transparent with our clients, we're not giving them the opportunity to help uh, contribute to that conversation and that dialogue. So it's, it's, it's a transparency, I, I think, is at the core of it, which of course then drives trust in the relationship with with whomever your your whether it's a tech partner or an agency partner or a brand is going direct to a creator, um, I think it's important. Yeah. All right. I, I have two questions, and I want to sort of let every make sure everyone has a moment to weigh in before I get to those two questions. Natasha, I'd like to toss over to you. I see. I see the. I see the energy. I get. I. I'm feeling the energy around you. What do you? What do you? Oh, I had on? like four things which I wanted to say on the community Please. side of it. 
So I've been the influencer on both sides. I have a company and I am, I'm still an influencer. I, I think we're all influencers. Every single person here for sure, but everyone watching, you're all an influencer in your own way, whether you're influencing your own family or whether you're influencing your community or your product, wherever you are, you're all influencers, right? So we are that. How do brands grow that in community? Well, they do things like they host events. So they have events for influencers and fans and people who like the brand to come and look at it, to come and engage with it, interact with the product, to come and be there. And they have parties. So many companies do this. I've been to so many for fashion brands, to tech brands, to restaurants, the whole way up and down. And it doesn't matter what you have. You, that's how you create community because all of a sudden you're posting and every influencer at your event is posting about the hashtag, about the brand, and you are just reaching millions of people through their audience. So you're reaching my 18 million people, you're reaching this person's say 2 million, this person's 1 million, this person's 200,000, this person's 100,000. You're reaching all of their audiences because that's community. And that's how you build it. You host events, but you don't just make it exclusively for influencers. You invite into those places people as well. You could do giveaways. 10 of you guys today are going to get a chance to come and socialize at this event or open it up and have the VIP area for your influencers and then have normal access. Events are a great way. I just host a massive um, influencer event for my book launch and we absolutely nailed it. It went all over the press. We had influencers talking about the book. Um, and it was incredible. We just put it together really well. So I, I sit on both sides. And then my other thing I wanted to share for somebody who wants to know how to get in touch with influencers and things like that. Do you know one of the coolest things that I do? So we have a look and I've been doing this for years and we still do this to actually grow my Instagram. This is how we grow on TikTok and so many other pages. Get yourself a list of five accounts that are similar to yours. Okay, so write a list. So for me, that might be and a similar is not competitive, by the way. I don't believe in the word competition. There's enough to go around for everybody. So I truly believe that they're like minded. So I'd have a look at perhaps for myself, people like Tony Robbins. I might look at um, my lovely friend Rhonda Byrne, the author of The Secret. I might look at particular people who I feel are a little bit similar to me. And then what you do is you go on their page and you have a look on their latest post. And here's the key. And write this down for someone who's listening and wants to learn this today. What you do is you have a look at, you have to excuse, I'm in the heart of New York for the first time. And oh my God, it's so amazing. It's it. it sounds like New York too. I love it. Welcome to New York. I was going to say her information is so hot that they're <laughs> coming to put out that fire. So. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be loud for like two seconds. I'm so sorry about this. But here we go. This is what you do. You go onto their latest post. You have a look at who has commented on their latest post. The people who are commenting on their latest post are people who are more than likely buying from that brand. They're more than likely already interacting with that brand. Let's just let's fast one second. It's so loud. It's gone. Okay. And then what you do is those people who are interacting, typing, commenting on that brand, if they are already engaging with that like-minded account, guess what, honey? They're probably gonna but like and buy yours. So go through that list of people who have commented, tap on their page, go onto their latest post and press like and comment. Hey, we, we love your page. We think you'll love our X, Y, Z, or you'll love what we have coming up, or take a look at our page, or just interact with them on a comment. It is as simple as that. And you could reach 250, if they've got 250 comments, you could reach 250 new people a day who are going to come and buy from you. And all of a sudden they become your influencers. Put that into practice. That's free. I will put that. Yeah, free. I love that. That's, and that, that, that cost, that's on the influencer and brand side. Yeah. everybody can do that. I do it from a brand perspective and I do it from an influencer perspective. I can do it from both. I can sell from that. You can close six figures in the DMs in a day from that. Literally, you're commenting on people's accounts. They write back to you. Oh my God, love your stuff. Love your page. Remember, I'm an influencer and I sell products. So I sit on both sides. So then they come over and then all of a sudden they're in my DMs. Then my team's closing them into a deal. It's the easiest way. But as a brand, I did see a question, which I just want to like tap into and then pass the mic to somebody else. And it was somebody said, do you keep the same influencers the whole way or do you use different ones? The 
quickest and most easy answer to give you is use a variety and use them on going. So if you can have one person like myself do it for three months at the same time as 10 other girls, don't rely solely on me because I've got 18 million followers. You need to rely on multiple people, but you don't just want to keep me for two years. It's going to get boring. So just use me for three months and then use somebody else. Just use loads of different people. Get as many eyeballs on you as you can and just go wild with it. That's my answer. And it's free. So there's no, no, no restrictions here. I love that. All right. We are getting close to the end of the hour. I want to make sure that we walk away with um, implementable, actionable advice that will actually help us convert influencer marketing. I know we've shared some of this already. I'd like to go around the room one more time clockwise, uh, starting with Nisag, and then we'll end with Natasha on our way out. Uh, Nisag, I'll come to you. Uh, the recommendation, the way that you recommend, maybe it's brands or influencers to be successful and convert in influencer marketing. Um, I'll just say on behalf of brands, to have a successful conversion around influencer marketing, find the right influencers. I think this goes a long way in building a very strong influencer strategy. Give the creative freedom to the influencers so that they can create the way they feel is right for the audience. Don't try to control a lot of that creation and align incentives with the influencers. Give Compensate them well. Uh, align incentives. You know, you can introduce an affiliate model. The influencers get compensated for every product or every conversion they drive. Um, I think that encapsulates what a brand should do uh, to have high conversion on the influencer marketing front. Awesome. And now we will toss it to Judy Fox, our sales strategist and uh, just LinkedIn pro, Judy. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, first of all, take that same energy that Natasha just hit you with and do it on LinkedIn. So few people are doing that on LinkedIn in the way that I I 1000% agree. That's exactly what I tell people to do. Go find someone who has already collected your ideal audience, your ideal clients. They're already talking with them. Join the community. Don't try to fight it and compete with it join. There's plenty of room and space. And what's really cool about LinkedIn is that not that many people are even doing that. So you will definitely make an impact. The second thing I'm going to say is I loved what Corey said earlier about being kind of, I picture it as like directing the customer journey, like the person doing the airplane and they're trying to get the airplane to like line up correctly. You want to be so crystal clear that that customer journey is going to have to stop on a dime, just like an airplane has to stop on a dime. You have to be so clear on LinkedIn. So make your profile, your company page convert, and then go build awareness and evaluation out on the platform. Convert from the profile because all the other energy, if you try to convert right from the post, too many times people are not warmed up. You just, you're traffic directing, go to my profile, go to my profile. All right, there, I'm done being a traffic director. And I always have to throw on the ears and just say, go out and oh do LinkedIn God. like a fox. Judy, you're my favorite. That's amazing. <laughs> <I know. laughs> There's my fox. <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess I, I mentioned conversion before and, and, the, and the importance of, of thinking full funnel when it comes to influencer marketing. There are a lot of a lot of tactics available, what, depending on the platform, the, the formats, the features, all of that factors into it. But it starts with coming up with making sure you have the right strategy in place. Even before identification and selection of influencers, I always encourage clients, um, anybody who is trying to figure out influencer marketing to think of one of three things when it comes to an influencer marketing approach that you start with. Are you are, Do you need content, credibility, or channel? And what I mean by that is, and sometimes it's a mix. Sometimes it's it's you need somebody to make content for you and you need their channel for distribution. But ultimately, one is always the lead horse. One is your priority when it comes to the marketing objective or the communication objective that you have. If anybody remembers anything, just ask yourself or ask your clients, content, credibility, or channel, what are they really getting at? What do they really need in this situation? Because then the strategy flows from that. And that's going to get you to conversion faster that's going to get you to the right tactics that you deploy. That's going to get you to the right creators that can make a difference for, for the, for your program. 
That one gave me goosebumps. <laughs> that that the universe just sent my way. Thank you for that, by the way. I, I hear that loud and clear. And I, I'm actually already playing in my mind. You know, you can have two of these cheaper, but you can't have all three of them. For just, so which two? <laughs> I can see how that paradigm sort of works with that. But that clarity is crystal clear. I think both as on the influencer side for what are they asking us for? What, what do they really want from me? Uh, to get the results that they want. And and as a brand, there's a great way to figure out what type of influencers to be working with as well. It's a really smart way to put that through. So thanks for the clarity on that, Corey. I appreciate that. Uh, Lola, let's, talk, let's toss to you. All right. Well, I mean, yeah. I've been taking notes. I'm learning so much from everyone here on the panel as well. So this has just been awesome. Um, and thank you for having me. My piece of advice would be for any marketing leader who's sitting there just sort of, okay, I know I have all this opportunity, but how do I actually get started? My company maybe is more conservative. We don't usually do these sorts of things. We're not the Pepsi or the Coke of the world. How do we get into this? Is to just think about the impact that you've had on your business from referrals as a starting point. And then think of an influencer strategy as a way to scale that. Come from that place of truth. Why do people refer you? What gets them excited to share with their friends? When you have new customers, what do they say it is that brought them in? And then use those as the building blocks for how you scale that with an influencer strategy, because it's really nothing different. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I know Natasha, right? I'm like, oh my God, that was so good. That was so good. Everyone's yeah. nuggets are amazing here. <laughs> we hope you guys watching are having as much fun as us because we're having a great time. We're learning so much from each other too. We're all learners. We're all in the school of life until the day we die. Neuroplasticity is happening until the day you die. Even though we once thought that it stopped at a certain age, it doesn't. It goes on until the day you die, which means you can learn a new skill at any time in your life. Neuroscience is my gig. Okay, here's my tip and my final tip for you. And I hope that this touches you. Can we just think for a minute of TripAdvisor? TripAdvisor is where you see all the comments and the reviews on restaurants, on places, Influences, we are TripAdvisor. We are literally your TripAdvisor. You no longer have to go on TripAdvisor and see it. You're gonna see it to all these influencers on your page. And then I might think as a buyer, as a consumer, when I'm buying your product that, oh my God, that celebrity just organically talks about this product. I don't know that you've paid them necessarily. I may think it's organic. So you've got to use it like TripAdvisor. The, Influencer marketing world is growing exponentially. It's not decreasing. It's only growing. So you either jump on the wave now and you ride it, or you stay in the dark age and your brand will stay the size it is. And if you're happy with it, if it's growing exponentially, then stay where you are. But if you feel that you might want to add another zero on the end of what you're delivering in your company at the end of this year, I suggest you get on LinkedIn, you use it in the right way, like these guys are talking about, you use Affable, and you get on platforms that help connect you, you get connected with the right people if you want to start there, Vinny's brilliant for this, he's amazing at networking, and connecting and putting people together, but actually go out there and get your influence marketing campaign going, give it a go, try it, you've got nothing to lose, Apart from a few bucks, which you're probably not going to lose if you do it correctly and you do your research, you're probably going to make a heap of money and add that extra zero on. I have to say, it's the best thing we ever did in my business, and it's the best thing that I do when I do it for other brands. So go and be your own trip advisor. I love you, Natasha, so much. I mean, and that, I, I feel that, and I hope everyone watching this does too. Uh, uh, thank you for giving us that energy uh, and for sending us, you know, with this information out there. I'm excited to have this conversation. Uh, hopefully this has made a dent. I want to put some words out there. I want to put some energy out there, some clarity. I want to change some rules. Uh, it all starts with people. You know, you know, rules need to be created to be broken and then restructured for an even stronger economy. And I think that that as long as there is feedback and, and Nisag, as long as there is a way for us the influencer to have a voice and us, the brand to have a voice. And there's true authenticity. I think, I think we'll be set. If you leave it to people to figure it out, led by data, which I love even more. So I, I believe that again, I don't, I don't mean to bring up my reality TV miss 20 years ago, but uh, that wasn't just left to people. There was a lot of media mingling involved in there on a platform level. What I think you're saying here is there's going to be media mingling. The platforms are going to do what the platforms do. And as we get into this decentralized creator economy, and as we 
balance out the centralized creator economy, how we show up as people, how brands show up as people, and how people work together. It's, it's networking. It's relationships. It makes so much sense. Cool. Well, y'all, inspiring conversation. Thank you so much. For anyone who's been watching, please follow these amazing, brilliant, literate, articulate masterminds in marketing and sales, by the way. I really, truly mean it that way. Um, anyone want to leave some closing, anyone want to leave closing thoughts or remarks, or is everyone afraid of what Natasha's going to say last? Because she I just want to say thank you for, <laughs> sends us out. You, Vinny, for bringing oh, this yeah. together. Thank You're you. Here. Yeah, this has been fun. I love 2022 for having brought you to my space. Thank you. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks. Again, people, it's us. And and you make me stronger as well. So I, I appreciate that. Judy, anything And be to sure say? to give Vinny, oh, I have to point that way. Vinny, Vinny. a follow. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Judy. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. the brunch squares. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, you're this way. Hi. Yeah. Oh, hi. How are you? Thanks for having me, Natasha. I love that. You know that a masterclass has gone one minute too long when we, when we get into this. But meanwhile, for, for y'all who, who tuned in, thank you so much for hanging out. If you want to take a screenshot of us and send it to us on Twitter, on LinkedIn, thank you so much for the energy. I'd love to tag and continue this conversation. Uh, all of this will be at the Affable page, affable.ai, if you can find that on LinkedIn. And of course, we will be regurgitating, repurposing, <laughs> pre-purposing, and expanding on this conversation on our own feeds. So I invite you to join us as we continue to, as Corey said, geek out <laughs> over influencer marketing. All right, I appreciate everyone right, here. Everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so Thank much for being part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a good rest of the first day.